this morning with a room full of folks with the same testimony. Some of the things, some of the things that I, I look at my testimony and I just didn't get caught, but I was going down the same path. Had I got just maybe one more, one more time, or one more uh, rough, rough patch of a road where I had got caught, I'd have been, went before that same judge, heard the same words, been through the same uh, issues of life. But we, but we're here today to serve a servant a Jesus that has every answer that we need. Here's what here's what the, the Word of God gives us in Acts nine. He said he journeyed and he came near Damascus, and suddenly and suddenly there shined round about him, shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth, and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, I am Jesus. You can hear, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go to the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men journeyed, and, uh, and with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and with his eyes were opened. He saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there for three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. But the power of God moved in his life in such an uh, extraordinary way. We're thankful for, amen, what, what God has done, amen, in our lives. I, I want to I talk real quickly just about a subject or thought today, no more refund, no more refund. This was uh, born out of a... Uh, a revival that we had here, a two-week revival that we have had here just, just a, a month or so back. And when, when I think about the word refund, here, here's, what, here's what a refund is. It is when a, a purchaser, somebody that is buying something, it's when they return it because something occurred. There was an unmet expectation. I don't know if y'all go to walmart.com or what, what is Amazon, all of these these online places that you now sit in your living room and can spend more money than when you get in your car and go uptown. But they, you, you can buy things, but in there, there is a, there's a return or a refund policy. And, and a refund is when the, when the purchaser, you, returns something that did not meet your expectation. I thought it would do this, but it did this. Or it came in damaged. Why don't you listen to these words? Unmet expectation. Damaged. Something that is defective. There's a defect there. Something that just doesn't fit. Or the purchaser, you, just, just decided out of nowhere, I just don't want this anymore, so I'm going to send it back to get my money. Many purchasers, before they buy anything, they, they always look at the retailer's refund policy before buying the, uh, the thing that they're about to purchase because they, they're buying something with the intent to that, you know, I may just not want it, so I'm going to refund it. I'm going to refund it. We, we start off our journeys often in life. We, 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 we have a mindset that, I, that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to start down this path, but if I don't like it, I'm going to turn around. If I get married and don't like it, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to help somebody. But we start this thing off in life in our mind tonight that we, we think somewhere along the way that if I don't like it or if it ain't good enough or if it don't meet my expectation, then I'll just refund it. I'll, I'll send it back. I'll, I'll get rid of it. But when a purchaser is fully satisfied or they like what they bought, everything showed up as advertised. It was exactly what I paid for. Then you keep the purchase and you can throw away the receipt there is no longer a need for it because what I bought is perfect and we look at this today as we start in our relationship with Christ we our minds start off and that's that's where these struggles of life tend to to come from the things that you say the people that you are around and and you say well it don't really matter what what folks say I, I want I want I want to take us down a, a quick little a quick little path they 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 was a a teacher in a school system somewhere that spoke to a young man that had been raised in church all of his life and he just began to speak things about not believing 
women and about how God, all of these things and, and, and all the questions in life that, that he had. And it, and it took that young man down a path to where he almost was about to ready to cash in the receipt or take it back and look for a a, a refund what he thought he had what he had been raised on all of his life it no longer seemed perfect to him we sit here today in this room uh, full of folks today with, with different struggles and different things that, uh, that are being uh, said and thrown out all around us but we serve a God inside this sanctuary that created the God we see created everything perfect no receipt necessary no brother Sheldon no refund policy uh, that is needed it was perfect and then something happened he created that perfect place that perfect uh, scenario that perfect garden that perfect Eden and, and everything there there was no damages it was perfect there was high expectation there was no defects there was no bills struggling to find a way there was no Johns going down a path spiraling out of control there was no you sitting here today with all these struggles in life but something happened man broke God's law we ask the question many times, why did God do this? Why did he do that? Why did he put this out there? Why does he allow this? Why if alcoholism, if he knew I would drink and I would uh, get into alcohol, why did he allow it? Why did he allow uh, marriage if he knew that uh, we would get divorced? Why did he allow all? And listen, it started in that perfect place, no receipt, no refund policy, but it started because man broke God's law. We broke it. We broke that law. And when men uh, broke that law, we f find ourselves in a broken world with a refund mindset. You're sitting here today and your mind is contemplating refund, refund, refund. I'll try it a while. If it doesn't work, I'll catch it back in. I'll, I'll keep the receipt. I'll put it in my pocket. I'll hold on to it uh, for just a little while. But I want to take us to a place that... There is a place at Calvary where you need no refund policy. There's a place at Calvary around the altar today that you need no receipts. The devil has filled us today. Our minds in a full of a place where we have found ourselves looking for a way out in a broken world. Our mindset looking for a way out, a way to cover up the defects or the disappointments or the heartaches and we, we turn to a few things when we find ourselves there this is where uh, we get into trouble we, we turn to alcohol we say well you know Jesus turned water to wine but here's what happens we, we find ourselves trying to hide pain or to cover up the effects of disappointment only to find a need for a refund to deliver us once that alcoholism because listen the act Satan never shows you the other side He's going to bait you up just a little bit and he'll use that. He turned water to wine and next thing you know you have forms of cancer coming up from alcohol or your liver starts to have issues or there's violence in the family or car accidents begin to escalate uh, because of this. And then we turn to sex and uh, we sit there and we say well you know, he, you know them in, in, in the Old Testament they had uh, many wives and we, we go down and we, we, we look in our mindset we're looking uh, to have a refund policy I want to cash it in adultery I want to, I want to speak on this for just a moment it, uh, infidelity it has a very destructive impact on relationships but oftentimes more than not leads to divorce which impacts now the family you're going to hear a lot about this on Mother's Day and Father's Day the need for the family to be uh, together and strong and, and bound together but it has an impact on both partners on your emotional or your mental well being and at the end of infidelity, it, or the, what we call the bring out on the housetop, when we start to find that what the devil told us was a bunch of lies and he told us it would never get exposed, it would never uh, be found out. As he, as he takes you down that path and it begins to become exposed, it creates an issue. Now we're looking, how do I cast this back in? How do I get out of this trouble that I'm in? No refund, no refund. And then we turn to anger. These, these refund mindsets, it drives down alcohol and sex. And, and then the next, the last one I'll address here this morning, it turn, we turn to, to anger. 
Anger often leads to destruction and rage that uh, pushes hate and even evolve to murder. And that's where Paul found himself on that road to Damascus that I just read you. So angry, so full of bitterness in life, so agitated. Listen, I've been around folks that are, that, are, that are so angry at the world. They're hard to be around. They're hard to talk to. They're hard to show the optimism of what can really happen. Just like uh, Angela said earlier that well, another year in life, there's, there's troubles and, 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 and trials and tribulation. But I will tell you on the other hand that there's blessings and benefits and glory and honor that the Lord Jesus gives gives to us as we breathe another day what's the victory in your life our mindset must change no refund policy turn to anger as Paul did he turned to this the master architect he gave us something called a Holy Ghost encounter this is the encounter that Paul found himself on on that road to Damascus that changed his life. It took away the need for the receipt in his hand or the receipt in his wallet. When you go up, the most policies say that if you decide, Brother Dolphus, to return this, you have to have the receipt. So you hang on to it. I wonder what you're holding on to in here this morning. What are you holding on to? What is in your mind that says, if this don't work? Listen, we're serving a God today that is from everlasting to everlasting. As far as the east is from the west. He can walk on water. He can open blinded eyes. He can heal the sick. He can save the lost. He can convict your family. He can save the drug addict. He can cure alcoholism. I said, my God, he can bring peace to anger. This is him today. This is him. This is what he does. It's this encounter that Paul had. But what happened was special because when the Holy Ghost encounter happened and Jesus went to get his attention, he put him on his knees. And here's what I'm going to get ready to give an article. Stand with me all over the building. Stand with me all over the building. He put him on his knees. You see, we find ourselves in a place today where we've become too refund minded that we no longer understand the importance and the need of this altar. Listen, this gospel has been preached enough to save the world many times over and over and over again. Songs have been sung that can loosen up the ground and the fertileness of your heart that, that can be penetrated by the word over and over and over again. But what is lacking today is that old-fashioned understanding of what occurs around this altar. That little boy that you're raising, that little girl that you're raising, that little grandson that you're raising, the granddaughter that you're raising. They're going to go to school one day and they're going to start to be educated. And listen, I, I, as much as, and, and I, I love our public school system, I love it. But there is some junk in there. You don't have preachers leading the school system. It's This thing can get far-fetched. Things can happen. Conversations can take place as those students start to confide in the teacher. Conversations start to occur. But what I'm telling you, mama, daddy, granny, granddaddy, auntie, uncle, is the importance of understanding this altar and what it does. Who is here? You see, an altar is where God himself takes his hand. Right here, right here. Because this, this is symbolic of this, this altar where the sacrifices are, are made. Right here. Your sacrifice is made right here. And God, what happens when this altar is on? God himself takes his hand. And he strikes the fire. Mm. Whoo! And he takes that fire and he comes down to this altar and he sets a fire underneath the altar. This ain't just a fire. You start something, let your fire go out. If it rains, it'll go out. If the wind blows, it'll go out. You gotta have all kinds. But he takes his hand and he lights this altar. This is a this is a fire that can break every chain. 
This is a fire that will take your little young, your little young boy, your young girl, your, your, young, your young family. And it will take it and it will change the whole trajectory that you're trying to happen in Houston. It happened in Lanier County where I was from. Stepping outside the door of a house one day, uh, doing some things I shouldn't have done. And I looked up and sitting on the passenger side was a man sitting there and he said, hey! 12 gauge shotgun, my knees buckled. I felt like Paul. I just fell straight to the ground, backwards into the house. A split second away from heaven or hell. And I ask you this morning, what, what type of receipts are you holding on to? We went to a place when we were remodeling the church years ago. And we go out to the, one of these old timey, I call them little country, little country churches that basically have been closed down for many, many years. And they just start, you can have this, you can have this, you can have this. And I remember going up to that altar. It was, was little wood benches. And I remember looking at them wood. They, they had them varnished. And man, they were pretty because they had them just great. But there was divots in them altars. You could see them with your eyes. You could feel them if you close your eyes and drag your hand across the wood. You could feel the divots inside the wood. And one of the original deacons in that church was there. So I was raised here as a little boy. He said these altar calls here were so powerful. When the farmer would come out of the woods and he needed rain. When the family would come in that was going through divorce and, and things starting to rip the family to shred. The children had gotten kind of out of control and wanted to go down a, a different. He said they would come to that altar. He said they would get to their knees and they would plant their elbows down on that altar. And they would wrestle. Listen to this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities and powers and how. Man, we, we walk up to an altar. We, we, we kneel down and say, quick. Sometimes we don't even pray. We just, we just go through the ceremonial part. But I'm talking about for you this morning that is holding on to something. There's a fire that is being lit right here now as I get ready to open these altars. Light it, Holy Ghost. And He knows your name. He knows who you are this morning. Under the disguise of homecoming, you are brought into this place for a change in direction and course in your life. Listen, he's here this morning. The Holy Ghost is here. The altars are lit. The wrestling is now about to set to begin inside of where you are. If you stop holding on to it, it's not come to turn it loose. To, watch this now. Watch what he did. It said there was a light that shone. Now, why do you think it was? Why do you think light came? Because it came to expose it. You come to bring it to the top. Not that everybody can see it. They will see it. You keep, you keep on running. It'll, it'll get on the high. But it's to expose it to show it to you. That you can come to this altar and say, Lord, let me turn loose. And I don't want no receipts anymore. I don't want to hold this no longer. But it's all up to you when you turn it loose. When you let this light that has been pushed up to this place this light that has been lit up by this altar will you let it will you let it expose it this morning that you and your family and the generations that come behind them oh they they say they folks gonna look at you they they folks gonna make I'm sure they they did about me oh he won't never last he won't never make it listen that's that's the devil's job. His job is to do that. But we're here this morning. And Jesus, there's no reason. Listen, you can't be defective enough for Jesus. You 
can't have enough anger problems that Jesus will turn his back on you. So I'm just going to cast them in. I'm going to write them off. I'm just going to take them back, throw them in the buggy, and push them in the car. The label's already ripped off. That's not the God I serve. He loves you. He knows your name. He's what my God. He's watching. And it's up to you. It's up to you. Will you come this morning? Will you come this morning? Will you come around this altar? He knows my name. I come to wrestle. Every step I take. Will you come? Every move I make. And all the tears I cry. He knows my name. Oh, uh, yeah. Even with all my pain. When I come can't on. see the come light on, come of on. day. Come on. Be change our lives. Okay. Change our lives. He knows. Oh, change our lives. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lamb of God. Oh, yes. He knows my name, Glory. even with all my Make pain. The way. When I can't see the light of day. Yes. Thank you, God. He knows my name. What you holding on to? What you holding on to? When you cut, all this should be full. What are you holding? Thank you, Lord. I don't know what tomorrow might bring. I can't tell you what's in store. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. yes. thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. And I don't have all the answers to now the let questions. Let us wrestle around this altar. 